Today we're going to talk about twice turning wood bowls. Why would you want to do it and how to do it. The term twice turning wood bowls is quite literally turning a wood bowl twice. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, what's going to happen when we turn a chunk of wood initially is the moisture is going to be quickly released from it. And every piece of wood, whether you've gotten this uh, locally, maybe you go harvest your own uh, timber that you can turn into wood, maybe you've bought a bowl blank, um, maybe you have wood that's just come down and is, is really wet, and maybe you have some wood that's been laying around in a firewood pile, they all have moisture and they're going to move once they've been turned. Now, like everything we're doing in, in wood turning is it species specific and condition specific, meaning moisture content, the environment that you're turning in, all of those variables basically make every single piece of wood that you bring to your lathe different than the previous one or the next one. Keep that in mind. Now, with that being said, there are species especially local species. If you have a local tree that you know you can get you can get frequently, if you have, you know, you can get somebody takes a tree down that's local to your area, go get that, get some pieces of the wood, turn it and experiment with it. See how it dries, see how it moves, see what it does. Now, some woods will barely move. Totally acceptable and maybe you once turn those and they're fine. They look great. But other ones you turn them and there'll be so much movement you start seeing distortion. Now let me give you some examples of that. This is an oak bowl. This is a white oak here from uh, locally that I've got from a ditch, just found in a ditch. And I turned it. And of course, when it was on the lathe, it was completely round. But if you look at this, you can see what's happened to the rim. The pith areas will, will rise up and move out. And they pull the sides in, okay? To me, I don't mind this. I think it's pretty cool, actually. It's got a really cool organic look to it. This is a once turned bowl. So I've completely turned it, let it dry, let it do its movement, and it's good. This is another once turned bowl. This is sycamore. It was turned rather thin, and it was very green at the time, meaning it was very wet. Look at this. <laughs> it's shaped like a football. That's, a, that's an American football. So all you guys in Europe and South Africa and Australia, it doesn't look like your football, but this looks like an American football. And this might be a little much for a lot of people. I mean, it's, it's pretty heavily distorted, but still, it's pretty cool. However, if you're looking for a nice round circular rim that's nice and even, twice turning is what you're going to want to do. Let me show you this. This is a uh, this is a cherry bowl that has been twice turned. I don't know if you can see that rim. You can see how straight that rim is, and look at that. It's a perfect circle. Now this was ebonized on the exterior, but it's basically a perfect circle, really nice and clean lines. And the reason it's still circular, it's dry. There's no more movement or not much movement that's going to occur. Keep in mind, all wood is equalized. It's never dry. It's equalized for its environment, meaning it's holding the equivalent amount of moisture in the air that's around it, and it's equalized. All wood has moisture in it. Uh, if you have a piece of furniture from your grandmother that's 100 years old, it has moisture in it. So anyway, that's a side note. I'm going to do a video on green wood turning so we can understand this a little bit more in depth, but for right now, I'm not going to get too far into the green wood part of it. What we're doing is we're turning it once and we're going to turn it thick. I'll show you an example here in a second. We're going to turn it thick and it's going to be relatively ugly and we're going to set it aside and let it do its equalizing or drying and distorting and then we're going to put it back on the lathe and true it up and make it nice, nice and round. That's what twice turning is all about. Okay, what I have here are two once turn bowls that have been once turned for the intention of twice turning. Okay, hope we're not making this too complicated. This has just recently been turned. It still has a lot of moisture in it. This is cherry. And now, what I'm doing is, and the, the rule of thumb is, you want to make the wall thickness pretty even, all the way from the rim down to the bottom. And, but you want to make the wall thickness about one-tenth of the, the diameter of the bowl. So this is pushing like eight inches. 
that means this is going to be close to three quarters of an inch in diameter and that's what we have here so it's nice and thick okay now what I'm going to do with this is I will actually use anchor seal and I'll put a link to this in the description below it's a uh, it's a sealant product that slows down the the moisture coming out of the end grain I'm only going to paint the end grain on the outside and on the end on both sides I'm going to leave the side grain exposed the side grain if you think of this like straws they're running this way and the the moisture doesn't come out of there as quickly as it does with the end grain these are the like the holes or the ends of the straw so the moisture is going to come out very fast here and that makes this area prone to cracking so when we seal that with anchor seal it's good and then I literally just set this on a shelf or I might put it in my dryer and let it be and you can sit, leave them sit for a good period of time here's a bowl that was once turned that has dried and moved and you can see that the pith area has gone has risen and it's moved out just a bit this is you can see the the anchor seal on the end grain here and everything is pretty much set up so it's it's a really ugly bowl but this is the first turning for a twice turn bowl now what I'm going to show you next is how I turn this into a final bowl let's go ahead and do that remounting this bowl to the lathe we really want to make sure it's secure and as close to true as possible now keep in mind it's been distorted so it's not going to turn true so what I what I have here is a jam chuck essentially it's actually a plat a flat platform that's been constructed that I got this I got this design by the way from Glenn Lucas um, it's a great concept it works very well so what we've got is two two sections of plywood like three quarter of an inch to an inch thick you've got one main disc one main disc and then a cutoff disc on each side and what this is is essentially the rubber pad from a floor mat and in the back I've got a just a real simple face plate this is going to mount to the lathe the whole purpose of having this center open is so that that this hump for the pith area can sit in there and the sides can rest comfortably and even on the padded area so what I've what I've done here is I've, I've made a couple circles in the center of this and I can see how close this is to being even on both sides I can see it needs to come down a little bit here okay so I'm basically gonna rough rough center that kind of eyeball it up there and I'm gonna pull the tail stock up now the center point on the bowl is usually in about the same spot so I'm gonna take a look at that I'm gonna tighten this up just a bit turn the lathe speed down and that's not bad it looks like there's a wobble in it because there is because the pith areas are thicker the very first thing I need to do is true up this tenon what has happened with this tenon is the same thing has happened with the whole bowl so the pith the pith areas are on the sides here well this whole circle tenon got stretched out to the side so it's actually an oval shape so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this marker and I'm going to try to find the circle that's inside that oval just by making a line there we go okay so you see what I'm talking about the line is right on the edge of the of the tenon right here but over here the tenon extrudes out you see how it bumps out there on both sides well that's the pith side and that's the grain moving out so what I need to do is with the bowl gouge I need to remove these high spots and true this up so it'll mount really really smooth and flush to the four jaw chuck so I'm going to tighten up the tailstock and the way I do this and the way I do this is to use a push cut into into the wood so I'm going to push inward just with a straight push cut now it's going to be a little bumpy because I'm getting I'm getting gonna have like a clicking sound because it's going to click on those high spots and actually I'm gonna to switch to my I'm gonna to switch to my 
spindle gouge, which I use to make the dovetail for my tenons. I'm going to speed this up just a little bit. I'm going to do it the same push cut inward. As I'm pushing in, I'm also pushing in at that slight angle to match the dovetail. It's about a 10 or 11 degree angle. Okay. I'm going to go back to the bowl gouge and I'm going to do a scraping cut here to get this shoulder cleaned up. You can hear it hitting the high spots there. That's what's making all the noise. While the, and when that sound gets a little more consistent and smooth, it means that we're getting a real nice, even flush cut all the way around. I'm going to come back in with my spindle gouge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to undercut that the bottom of this dovetail just a touch because I want to make sure that that chuck sits down there really really well. Now if you haven't seen my how to make a perfect tenon video make sure you check that out because this is really important for having a nice clean solid connection to the lathe with the four jaw chuck. I'm looking at the shoulder and it's kind of rising up a little bit. I want to make sure that's nice and straight all the way across. The nice smooth cutting sound is telling me that that shoulder is now flat. Kick back there. All right, and then I'm going to go back here. Check that out. Might have to take this tenon down a little bit. You can see how I'm pushing down in there at the bottom of that crease. That's where the sharp corners of our chuck's going to sit, and we want to make sure that's good and flush. Okay, so I'm looking here and making sure this tenon is nice and round, and it really is. Okay, great. That's probably the most important part of the entire job, is to make sure that this tenon gets chewed up really nice, and that shoulder is restored to a nice, flat, completely straight surface all the way across, because the top of our four jaw chucks are going to rest up against the shoulder and grip onto the tenon. All right, from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of shaping of the base of this bowl with pull cuts and scraping cuts. I may do some shear scraping. I'm not going to do any push cuts here. I'm just going to pull this out to about here, and then we're going to mount it to the four jaw chuck, and we're going to reverse it and go from there. Now, the, the pull cuts are going to be, they're going to be almost horizontal. And what I want to do is I need to get a little extra support from the tool rest, so I'm going to actually open it up just a bit. And that way it gets a little more perpendicular. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the bottom wing of the bull gouge and I'm going to make some pulling cuts across the surface here to start shaping the bottom of this bowl. And then I will put it on the chuck. Make sure the tailstock is tight. I'm going to start right here at the side of the shoulder. When I open the bull gouge open, it's going to be more of a pull cut, but for right now I'm kind of start mixing it. It's kind of a hybrid scraping pull cut here. The idea is just to get a nice shape on the bottom of this bull that's uniform and it's got taking that hump out.
base of the bowl has a nice shape going on here. It's cleaned up. It's even throughout. And I am going to do a push cut here to straighten out the rest of this before we turn it around in the four jaw chuck. So let's go ahead and do that now. And this is going to get a little rough here because we've got a high and a low spot. But I'm going to make a, a, a push cut. I'm taking the bull gouge and I'm positioning it in the direction I'm going to go at about a 45 degree angle. I'm trying to keep the, the bevel edge pretty close to flush with where the surface will be. And then we just make the cut. Okay, you hear that you hear that bouncing or that clicking sound? So on the side grain we're making a nice cut, but on the end grain we've got oh I'm sorry, on the on the end grain we're making a cut because it's sticking out. So we're cutting that off, but on the side grain we haven't quite gotten down to the side grain. So what's happening is it's it's cutting here, then it's coming off, and then it's coming back on here and then cutting off and then on. So that's what's making our clicking sound. So I gotta make a little bit deeper cut across here. Okay, I'm still getting that clicking sound. Let's see if we got a low spot in here still. There, it's not too bad. I'm starting to get like little swirl marks here. That means I'm, I'm skipping a little bit. All right, let's try this again. Okay, I'm gonna make another pass. I'm gonna try to get it closer up to the pad here. Of course, I don't wanna get into that pad because we don't wanna get a catch and cause a problem. But what I'm just trying to do at this point is just remove the bulk of the uneven material before we turn it around and put in the four jaw chuck. Now I'm applying, I'm applying down pressure onto the tool rest and I'm trying to use my body to make this movement. I'm not moving my hands, I'm not pulling this around, I'm trying to make a nice even steady pull by just shifting the weight on my, on my knees. I'm basically like flexing my knees a little bit and just moving my weight from the right side of my body to the left side of my body and pulling my entire body from right to left with the bull gouge. Okay, that's looking real good. And it sounded good too. Sounded like we got a good cut all the way through. The, the shape isn't perfect, but we're gonna fix that in just a second. You can see here the, the differences on the side. It's a little thin. It's a, it actually didn't cut up here. It's, we still gotta get a little bit deeper, but we'll be able to fix that when we turn it around. So let's go ahead and turn the, the bull around now. Okay, so we're gonna remove the tail stock take the bowl off and you can see what's happening here with the uh, the rim set that aside what's happening with the rim you can see where the sides are low and the ingrained is high it goes low high low high we're gonna fix all that in just a second I've got a little bit of a crack I need to deal with here all right, slide this over now we're done with this jam chuck. I'm calling it a jam chuck because essentially that's what we're doing. There could be other names for this, but essentially we're just jamming the bowl up against it with the tailstock. Now the amount of time that we took making this tenon and truing it up again is going to be shown right here. You can see we've got a really nice flush contact with the top of the jaws to the shoulder. The tenon is not touching the base of the four jaw chuck. 
and the dovetails are gripping very nicely because of the angle on the tenon. And now that it's true and round, it's got a really good mount there. Now let's take a look, let's turn the lathe on and take a look at our shape. We still have a little bit of a wobble out here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start working this, this exterior and make that nice and round, get the shape exactly that what I want, and we'll go from there. I'm gonna be using scraping cuts and pull cuts, and then I'm going to use some shear scraping to smooth this off, but I wanna make a nice curve throughout the exterior of this bowl. When you hear that clicking or that wobbling, that means there's a high spot and low spot, and we're just gonna go ahead and smooth that out right now. So if you're a little nervous about doing the pull cut, which is really common because you first do this, it's easy to get a catch and it wants to twist down. What I do is close the flute. Let me show you. You can take the flute and almost have it up against the, the bowl and then just slightly open up the top so it's the bottom wing that's that's touching there. Keep it horizontal to the to the bowl, or to the in parallel with the tool rest almost. And you basically pull across and you make a scraping cut. And then if you if you want, you can start opening up that flute and then make a pull cut. And you're going to be on that outside bevel. If you get off the bevel, it's possible to get a quick little catch. But if you're kind of holding on to the to the handle relatively firm, you're not going to have that. Okay, so as I'm refining this shape, I'm watching the curve and the profile up at the top. It's really hard to tell what's happening at the tool when you're looking there. Obviously, I'm looking there to see if I'm set up the way I need to be, but I'm really watching this top edge to get the shape and the curve of the bowl. The more time we spend on the exterior, the better this bowl is going to be. The shape of the bowl is dominated by the exterior profile, and that's what we want to spend some time working on. So the tenons, the utmost importance because that's going to give us the best secure connection and then the spending some time getting the exterior profile the way we want is the next most important thing. I'm going to pick up where I left off and I'm going to start with a push cut. I've got the, I'm on the bevel, I've got on the bevel and I've got the nose of the bull gouge pointed in the direction I'm going to be cutting. I'm getting to the top of that rim. You can see there where the high spot is of the rim. I'm liking the shape of that, except I need to refine it just a little bit more. So now what we've got is we have a high spot and a low spot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to true up that this rim on the front side. So I'm going to move everything around just for a moment so I get a nice flat top portion of this rim because I want to take that I want to take this high spot on the ingrain down so that it's level all the way across. The inside is still going to be off as well but we're going to deal with that in a minute. I'm just going to focus on the rim for the time being. Okay, I'm just going to keep all my pressure down on the tool rest. Again, I'm using my body and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna move my body weight forward and the tool with it. This is the high spot first. like it connected all the way around and take a look there's a little low spot here that did not get cut so I got to go a little bit deeper and I think that crack that we were dealing with may have disappeared that's really nice all right
Okay. Now we've got a nice flat flush rim here. We can go back to the side and start working that. Now I have the shape almost there. What I'm going to do is more pull cuts and shear scraping cuts to get that outer profile right where I want it. So if I see a little high spot on there, I can, I can just make a shear scrape cut or scraping or shear scrape cut just in that one area and then blend the whole area around where that high spot was. Got some, I'm getting some chatter here because of the extension over the tool rest. I'll tell you what, I actually want to take the profile of this bowl and I want, to, I want the rim to go inward just a little bit. So I'm going to make a push cut to the high point on the side here. Okay, I like that a lot. Now we got a little bit of a high spot here and I need to deal with that. When I'm making the shear cut and the shear the shear scrapes and the or I'm sorry, the scraping cut and the shear scrapes, I want the tool rest to be almost perpendicular to the tool because that's gonna give me the most support while I'm making these cuts. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We need to blend just a little bit more down here. It's also a really good chance to use the light. If you bring the lights on the side of the piece, they're gonna cast a shadow on the high spots and you can see where you need to remove material. Again, I'm watching, I'm watching up here on the top of this edge. This, this top profile is where I can really see how smooth I'm making this curve. So I'll make my cut and then I'll watch that top edge and see if I'm getting the, the shape that I want. Okay, so the exterior shaped and beautiful, looking good. And we've got a basic flat rim here. Now I like to take my rims and have them drop inward a little bit to the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that shape. I'm gonna make the shape of this rim and have it drop inward. But what's gonna happen too, I have to remember, because this is distorted, there is, this is gonna be uneven a little bit. So I can't make it as wide as here. I have to find the thinnest area appears to be maybe like the sidewall right here and and then I'm going to start removing the material on the inside. What I'd like to do is make the rim relatively wide and then have the wall thickness underneath it about half that thickness. So it has a nice stout looking rim that's that's sturdy and it's durable but the wall thickness is relatively thin so the bowl, the bowl itself will be nice and lightweight. So I'm going to go ahead and shape that rim now. You can, see, you can see the exterior, how that's a perfect circle, and the interior, how it's wobbling. That has to do with the distortion of the bull blank as it dried.
a lot of times I like to feel this and just stop the lathe and then see how this feels. Okay, I've got a, I've got a really high spot in here that's not going to be so great. And I'm going to go ahead and define that thickness right now too so it can also help me shape this. So what I'm going to do is just a simple push cut in and make just a little ledge so I know where that rim is going to end. Okay, then I'm going to check the I'm going to check that cut I just made and make sure it's actually circular and it is. And you can see that there's underneath it you can see the variation of the thickness that was what was making that clicking sound. So let me go ahead and shape that rim and get it finished. Yeah, that's feeling really good. I'm going to do a, a gentle scraping cut here to kind of fine tune that shape. This is, this is a shear scrape and I'm making very light pressure on it because I don't want to tear out any end grain or side grain here. You know you're making a nice shear cut when you've got this beautiful thin shavings coming off. See how that feels. Feels pretty good. Still a little high in there. I need to blend it just a little bit more. Now this is cherry too. So I and cherry is just a beautiful wood to turn. I've turned enough of this that I know how it's going to behave roughly. And I know that I can sand this and get, get it down beyond this. So if I see any kind of rough spots on here, I know those are going to sand out. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Uh, just checking that. A little bit of more fine tuning there. Okay, nice. Now, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slowly work from the, the rim inward and start removing material. I'm going to make push cuts into the bowl. I'm going to clear the uneven material out of the way so I've got a nice smooth cut. With this particular cut, I'm using my thumb and pressure down on the tool rest as a pivot point, and I'm moving the handle around. I'm not doing any other movement other than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some material out of here, and then I'm going to undercut this rim just a little bit. Take a look at what we've got. Okay, it's starting to go under. The undercut's okay. I need to go deeper. So what I want to do is I want to curve inward underneath that rim just a bit more. So we'll keep working at little cuts at a time. Now I'm going to have an open flute here. This is kind of an advanced cut, so don't do this if you're not comfortable doing it. And just make light cuts. Okay, so now that we're under, I want to feel that. It feels pretty good. I still want to make it thinner, so I want to undercut just a little bit more. And it's going to require coming around the corner just a bit. 
So I'm going to go ahead and bring the tool rest up as close as possible for plenty of support. I'm going to remove more of this material and I'm going to just keep working in this and get this hollowed out underneath that rim just a bit more. Now, I could do a scrape cut here, which is going to give me a little more access underneath that rim. Let's give that a shot and see how that turns out. I've got the flute close to the inside of the bowl, and I'm using the bottom wing only. Okay, so let's take a, take a look at that. Okay, the wall thickness on the side down below the rim is getting closer to what I want. That's looking good. I still need to remove some more underneath that rim. Okay. Now, the only, the only reason I don't like doing that a lot is because I'm do, making all hand movements. And when we do that, we're not going to have a really smooth curve. What I'd rather have is a controlled body weight shift. It's going to give me a, a much more reliable cut. So I'm going to go ahead and thin this out a little bit more. Now, just so you know, too, I'm cutting here, but I'm actually looking at the opposite side, just as I was doing earlier on the exterior. I'm watching the cut on the opposite side because I can see it clearly being made and I can see how smooth and when I need to add pressure or maybe make a little bit lighter cut. With that slight inside curve of the exterior, it will hold all the bowl, will hold all the shavings as you go. It's just how it works. If it's just the slightest inward curve, it'll hold shavings. Okay, so I'm going to keep removing material there from the side. Pretty good. Keep removing that center. Okay, I'm going to switch my tool rest to my curved tool rest. It's going to help me reach in there and get a little bit better access. I'm going to take that nub down. Now, if this were a very thin bowl and you've removed this interior, I would not ever recommend coming back up to this top rim because there's going to be vibration out there. But this bowl is relatively thick and sturdy, so it can handle it. If I wanted to come back here and make a a final finishing cut to sweep across the whole bowl, I should be okay. I've got the wall thickness at probably about 
three eighths, maybe even close to, yeah, it's probably about three eighths of an inch thick, maybe a little less. Now that little nub in the middle, I can use a push cut. See my tool slowing down here? The rotation in the center of the bowl is slower, or it's slower than the outside rim because of the distance. It's only a short distance, and the distance that takes to make a full revolution happens a lot slower than the speed of the outside rim. So I'm just going to take this slow so I get a nice smooth cut. Now I'm not down to my final depth, but typically what I'll do is I'll just make these last few cuts really slow and steady so I just kind of just kind of merge into the final cut at the end. So I'm not making, not ripping out any grain or anything. And I'm just taking a thin layer at a time. I'm not trying to force the gouge into taking out a big depth of the bowl. I'm just taking little layers at a time here. See how slow that's cutting right there? Just let it take its time and cut it so you're not ripping out grain. See, I, I actually accidentally pushed the tool in too deep, so it started taking a bigger chunk, and that's where you catch. Basically, a catch is when you just overwhelm the bowl gouge and you've got too much material be, trying to be cut all at once, and that's where you get a catch. So I'm just going to go back in and just do a thinner layer. check the thickness here. Okay, I can't reach around the sides there, so I'm going to use my, my depth gauge. Check that real quick. Yeah, it's pushing almost a half inch. Yeah, I've got plenty of material there, so we're, we're good. I'm just going to take my time through this. Before I make the last final passes on the inside of this bowl, I want to make sure my tool is really good and sharp. So I'm going to go ahead and sharpen this really quick. Now if you're having any kind of issue sharpening, or if you want to learn how to sharpen all your tools for bowl turning, you have to check out my Tool Sharpening for Wood Bowl Turning course. I have an online course that will teach you all the aspects of sharpening from why to sharpen, when to sharpen, how to sharpen, all of the tricks, and I'm actually going to show you how to do five different bull gouge profiles, and I'll explain all the purposes for those bull gouge. So check out my tool sharpening for wood bulls course online. All right, so I'm down. I'm probably going to have a couple passes to make here to finish this up. 
And I just want to make sure I get a really nice smooth bottom inside this bowl. So what I'm doing as far as the bowl, the gouge positioning is I'm picking up the cut with the, the bevel rubbing the base of the bowl and then I'm slowly, I'm letting just a little edge of that cut and as I get to the center I'm going to close the flute on the very end point. So I've got a really slow, a slow progression to that middle and I don't want to rush and push it across there because I will most likely pull out wood grains right in the middle of the bowl and we don't want that. So I'm going to continue this cut nice and slow and easy. And then I'm going to rotate the flute, bring it into the middle at about 3 o'clock. Just let it cut, let it cut, and go across the middle. Now there's a little nub there, but that can be sanded out. It's not a problem at all. All right. Okay, I'm going to sand this up and then we'll take the base off and we'll finish up the bowl. All right, I went ahead and sanded the bowl. I spared you guys from that because it's kind of boring and tedious. I'll probably do a sanding video later so I can show you, I guess, how I sand if anybody's interested. If you're interested in seeing a sanding video, uh, leave a comment below and let me know. Also, if you've got any questions about any of this, please leave a comment. Okay, so this is a jam chuck. I have another video all about using the jam chuck for removing the tenon on a bowl. I'm not gonna get into great detail about this because you can watch that other video. I'll put a link up in the corner right now so you can check that out. And I've got a little pad here that I'm gonna put in place. I'm going to position the bowl over the jam chuck and then bring our tailstock up right on the pinpoint that it made previously. And check it and make sure it's square and then I'm going to get in here and shape this foot of the bowl and finish this up. Let's see it. It's turning really nice. I'm using that scraping cut again to remove this material. It's kind of a scraping pull cut. Now what I'm doing is I'm just blending this area into the curve of the whole overall bowl exterior. Now I'm going to use a shear scrape to smooth that area out really nice and blend it even more. Take a look at that. Yeah, it's looking real good. The curve looks pretty good. I just need to sand that out and then I'll finish up this foot area. I've, this little crease inside here needs to be cleaned up just a bit. And I can do that with the spindle roughing gouge. Or, I'm sorry, not the spindle roughing gouge, but rather the spindle detail gouge. So I'm just going to make a nice clean cut into the base of the bowl and then from the bowl rim into the base. All right, I'm going to clean that up just a little bit more. Now that foot's a little high, so I'm going to bring it down just a bit. You really should turn the lathe off before moving the tool rest. And the, and the bottom of the foot is not flush, as you saw that as I cut it, it cleaned it up, but there's a little bit of high spot there. Oh, 
with my bull gouge here in the base, what I'm going to do, actually bring this down just a touch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make an inside pass. So I'm going to lower this. What I want is the inside of this foot to be relatively flush with the shape of the exterior of the bull and then come out to the feet itself. So what I'm going to do is do an inward cut towards the center. And for right now, I'll stop right there at the tail stock. Again, I'm going to check and make sure that's tight. Now this is an open flute cut. And if you notice, I'm making, I'm just taking a very thin bit of material off. If I push that in there, I'm going to get a nasty catch. I don't want that. I'm just going to take a light cut. So we're starting to define the shape of the, of the base there. Now what I can do is a, a pull scraping cut here to define the wall thickness of the foot. I'm just going to pull this back a bit. Okay, this is a completely open cut. We're going to go nice and slow. This is a good point when you're when you're doing this to make sure there's no there's no broken wood or anything in here to make sure you got the clean connection. That connection is still going to be nice and solid there. And I'm seeing a little bit of a ridge here, so I'm going to try to fix that ridge real quick. I'm using a scraping, really light scraping cut with the bottom wing. And again, even here, I'm cutting here, but I'm watching the shape transform on the opposite side. Okay, that's looking really nice. Now I'm also noticing one other thing. This, the bottom flat edge of the foot is not flat. I'm gonna need to cut it in just a little bit, otherwise it may wobble. So I'm gonna bring this in and just make a little bit inward cut. So you want that, obviously, that foot to be nice and level or slightly inward towards the center. That way it'll, it'll sit nice and flat on the tabletop. Clean that up just a touch. Okay, so we'll continue taking this nub off. Now, at this point, if you're not comfortable going any farther with this, this is totally fine. What you can do is you can take take this off the lathe and you can sand that nub down. If you're using a rotary sander like the, um, the, the drill sander, you can just sand that right off and it's no problem. I'm going to show you how to take it off using the spindle gouge. Now remember, the spindle gouge is never used for any, any large material on, the, on a bowl. It's only for small detail work like what I'm doing right now. So I'm going to go ahead and taper this in just a little bit more. Make an undercut. Just a little bit more. It's also a good idea to bring the lathe speed down just a little bit here. Okay, that's pretty thin. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to clean up the, the bottom of the foot, bring this in, now I'm going to apply pressure into that nub while I turn off the lathe. And then I'm just going to manually turn the bowl and push the spindle gouge into it until it disconnects, just like that. And then I back the tailstock off and we have this little nub here. Now this area can be easily sanded and smoothed out. I'm going to do that real quick. All right, this is 
one of the more fun parts of turning a bull. Actually, all the parts are pretty fun, I think. But putting the finish on is always, always a nice reward at the end of a project like this. So what I'm going to be putting on is tried and true Danish oil, which is 100% pure linseed oil. That's it. There's nothing else added to this. And I'm just going to start rubbing this in. I'm just going to apply a very thin coat. I just need to coat the, the material. It doesn't have to be thick or dripping. Actually, this is thicker than it needs to be, so I'm going to spread this out and move this material all around. Look how beautiful this cherry looks once it gets oil on it. So this, this product is really, really nice. It coats the and seals the wood so beautifully, and it only needs a really thin layer. If you're seeing oil on the surface, there's enough there. So this doesn't need to be put on thickly. As a matter of fact, if you put it on very thick and you let it sit, it's going to get gummy and sticky. You don't want it to be thick. So the way this works with the linseed oil only, or the Danish oil, which is linseed oil, is you basically put a really thin coat on, you let it sit about 10-15 minutes, and then come back with a clean, lint-free cloth and rub it down and you rub off any extra thick material because if there's any thick material in there and it sits for any length of time it's going to get it's going to get kind of tacky and gummy and you obviously don't want that so this will usually probably take a couple coats but i will let this sit for a few days and then see how the finish looks it usually soaks it up nicely and it may look a little bit dry it's not going to be this shiny once it's once it's all set but it will um, it will look really nice. And a couple coats on this I found, especially with this, this black cherry, two or three coats works great and it gives it a really nice luster. Uh, not quite as shiny as when it first goes on like this, but it's a really nice rich luster after about three coats. There you have it. This is a twice turn bowl. Look at that perfectly circular rim, perfectly straight across the top and nice and round. Now compare that with a once turned rim that has that was a little bit wet when it, when it was turned and then it dried and distorted. That's the difference. This is twice turned, this is once turned. So now you know all about twice turning and how to twice turn a bull. Now I've got a question for you. Are you going to twice turn any bulls? Do me a favor, leave a comment below and let me know. And also while you're there, Click the like button if you like this video. I need those like buttons clicked. Just pound on that like button on all my videos if you would. It helps me with YouTube and all that good stuff. And also, if for some reason you're not subscribing, hit the subscribe button right now and click the bell next to it. So the next video that's coming out, which probably will be pretty soon, you're going to get a notification and you can check it out right away. So do me a favor, click the like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me know if you're going to, if you're going to turn any twice turn bulls. And... As always, until next time, happy turning.